This is it. That's why. dot com. That's why the multiverse of gardening. The Dimension Warrior. Need to escape? This is your ticket. Read the comic. Download the music. But don't lose your luggage. And beware. This is true escapism. That's why. dot com. Hello, this is the successor, the webmaster of Chapel of Resonance. dot com, also the creator of the comic book series That's Why Multiversal Guardian, which you can find at Zatswan. dot com. And today, I'm going to be talking about the Castlevania Netflix cartoon series. That recently、um, launched on Netflix. It's a four-episode series, and I'm also joined by Blaze. Hey, yo! And we're going to give our opinion on the series. Now, this is a series that's been announced for a long, long, long time. I remember about it may have been as long as eight years ago. Seven years ago, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't look up the exact dates, but this series was in the works way back then, and I honestly haven't been keeping up with it. I actually figured it was not going to happen after so long, as anybody would, I think. And I haven't really been keeping up with its production or how it's been going. It was just all of a sudden I heard. That there's a Castlevania series coming to Netflix, and I still wasn't really sold on if that was going to happen, and I didn't really even know it was going. It was that same project I heard about eight years ago, but here it is. This script has been done, or some form of it has been around for this long, and finally, the Warren Ellis written script of Castlevania has been put into a complete. Product, a finished product, and we've finally seen this. Now Warren Ellis, he's a famous comic book writer, and honestly, I'm a big fan of comics, but I never read any of his work just because we never crossed paths. He was never writing anything that I was particularly interested in, but he's got a really, really good reputation. So, if he wasn't writing anything that you were interested in,、um, what was he writing? <laughs> He wrote a series called Trans Metropolitan. He wrote a, a landmark comic book series called The Authority. He wrote a Marvel comic series about a gang of supervillains that I think were kind of doing good deeds. Maybe something similar to Suicide Squad, called Thunderbolts. Don't like quote me on what that's about. I know it's about villains who are the protagonists. Though I do think Luke Cage was in it too, so I don't know. Like I said, don't. In, in all likelihood, he was.、I、oh, mean, I'm sure he was writing that, but don't. I don't know well, exactly well, what it was about. Right. I'm just saying, in all likelihood, Luke Cage was in it.、They're、oh yes, he was. Throw us a familiar <laughs> face, because I mean, it, it seems to me that this guy is works on obscure projects that you know may or may not have more popularity than some you know Marvel characters, but nothing that the You know, casual person will will know about.、I've、no, I don't think so. Like, I don't think he's ever done a run on Superman or Batman. Not that I've heard of. I think the thing that he's probably most famous for is the Authority. So,、um, if you really want to get a idea of Warren Ellis's comic book writing skills. From a person who's never read Warren Ellis, but just who's been in the comic book community and kind of knows、um, which stories are the most influential, I would say The Authority is probably the most influential Warren Ellis story, which I've never read because I was not really interested in it.、Um, I don't know whether it's good or not, but、uh, Warren Ellis has a big name and a big following, so. 
they got him, whoever got him, to do this Castlevania series. And I actually have to give Warren Ellis props because if you watch the series, being a huge Castlevania fan, now that is something I know a lot about, it's easy to tell that Warren Ellis did his homework and if he did not play the games themselves, he at least must have watched some playthroughs. It seems like someone did something more than just read some Wikipedia blurbs on the stories. It seems like he pretty much knew um, what he was doing as far as getting, as far as depicting Castlevania. Now, not everything is perfect, and I will get into it, but as far as the big story beats, like, um, Lisa and Dracula um, fall in love, conceive a child, Lisa gets killed by humans, and um, Dracula wages a campaign against humanity, and, uh, and the Belmonts get ostracized from society. All that stuff is in Castlevania, and the cool thing about this series is that Castlevania is very, very vague on pretty much all those events. It says they happened. It depicts scenes of some of the, the events happening. Like, for instance, in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, there is a nightmare sequence when Alucard uh, sees his mother being uh, killed by humans. So we did see that happening. The games like tell us that happens and to a degree they show us that these events happen, but they're very vague. They never go into like the uh, nuts and bolts of it. And this is actually the first time in any Castlevania presentation that we're actually seeing exactly the specific circumstances of why the humans killed Lisa how they kill Lisa. Like, apparently the show led me to believe Dracula was actually living in the village with the people. And then he went away to travel. And while he was gone, then they, the humans, attacked her. I never really... That's the way I took it, at least from seeing that's the first episode. That's the way episode. I took it as well. I mean, he, he, I think his line in, at that part was kind of that... At least from what I can remember was that she convinced me to live like humans, to live with humans, to travel among humans, something like that along yes. those lines. So I uh, am under the impression that he was going back to her house because that was also his house. <laughs> yeah, and the games never tell you, personally, to tell you the truth, I thought she lived in Castlevania. Right. Uh, <laughs> Before the show, yes. Before the show, yeah. And, you know, you kind of, as a fan you wonder like how does this work because that's the type of stuff that fans you know pick apart and wonder about like we know lisa and dracula had a relationship how did that work i mean he is a vampire lord and um the another interesting thing too the show lets us know that dracula actually did not have his army of goons when he lived with Lisa. Um, the games don't let you know that. Actually, the games actually kind of led me to believe he did because Matthias Kronkvist, who is the who is who Dracula was before he became Dracula, he was a uh, knight working for the church, a tactician during the Crusades. He got death, the powerful being on his side in the lament of innocence game so it kind of i was kind of under the belief that dracula already had his gaggle of goons prior to knowing lisa well you know you you get goons you lose goons uh, yeah unless you get more to replace them you will run out of goons i mean he as much as said that he had stopped sticking people on spikes true uh, he must have been doing that some kind of way huh right so if you're not going to be sticking people on spikes, you might as well not have any more or get any more goons for a while, you know? Right. Now, what I don't like about this cartoon, actually, since we're talking about it, I guess we can get into the subject. The monsters. Now, the monsters in Castlevania are a massive part of 
Castlevania, all the games. When you really think about it, Castlevania started out as kind of an in homage to monster movies and the monsters were pretty much the main feature you'll note that in the in japan it's known as uh the demon castle dracula series dracula is at the forefront it's actually the dracula series so the monsters are pretty much the main showcase here and that's where i really think this cartoon one of the areas where for me it seriously dropped the ball because it did not seem to realize that the monsters are a huge showcase of castlevania we basically saw one type of monster which was some kind of man bat you know like similar to the batman villain man bat you know like a right. a man bat type thing <laughs> that flew and was vaguely humanoid. I just called them dragons. They breathed <laughs> fire, you know, they had wings. I think they were supposed to be very bat -like. simpler. But I know, I know. Dragons. But, uh, it, they breathe fire, they have wings, and it's a True. simple descriptive for a monster like that. A man bat, you know, that works as well. I wonder <laughs> if it's supposed to. I don't think so because I don't really think they, they worried about correlating with the games this like this, but. Yeah. I wonder if it was supposed to be Giant Bat, the famous Castlevania boss. Because I don't think so. No. When you think about it, he breathes fire too, actually. Right. Shoots right. a little fireball every now and then. <laughs> but no, I don't think I don't think so either because if for no other reason, I don't think they that's an area where I don't think they really considered the games much. And the you do have to look at the games to actually know about these enemies. To right. know about these iconic enemies like Hunchback and, and Skeleton and Bat and uh, Merman. Uh, so And that's why, I, I, I mean, you give him props for doing his homework, but I think he either didn't do enough homework or he did too much homework because the, the entire thing, the entire four episodes you get was kind of like a prologue to me. It didn't get into anything. It didn't show any enemies except for that man bat slash dragon slash whatever you want to make of it and it, it really people might like that but for an entire season i don't know how long you have to wait for the next season you know and all i got was a hundred minutes of um the the story starting it it didn't give me anything really so yeah, we didn't get any enemies because maybe he didn't do enough homework. And I mean, how hard is it to draw a skeleton, you know, attacking people? Yeah. Now, I don't really have anything against that man bat villain. But when it's like the only thing that's hugely depressing or not depressing, kind of. It is I mean, disappointing when you've been when you I mean, you haven't been waiting these eight years for this to happen. No, but I you haven't. know that it's been in production for eight years. Well, and when you take that into consideration, then yeah, it's disappointing. <laughs> well, let's know? be clear on one thing. Now, and I don't necessarily think that that is exactly what you meant, but the project I don't think has has not been worked on for eight years. I don't think it basically just take, took eight years to get this to us. How long they actually worked on it, I don't know. And I imagine right, but the, I could, the script is eight years old. Yes, I can only imagine the thing that was really holding this up was they had to get the funding. And that was probably the issue for them. I'm guessing. I don't know. I was not behind the scenes. Now, um, another since we're talking about things that disappointed us, I guess we're starting with that. Another thing I really didn't like, and this is a deviation from the games, is what is up with this like duller than dull soundtrack? I mean, for a Castlevania fan, this... I don't know. It's like probably on equal footing with the disappointing enemies because Castlevania... The money, Lebowski. The money. That's what it is. I mean, if they could have afforded... You know just by the fact how, of how long it took that they were having, you know, money issues. Yeah. If they could have afforded, if they could afford, you know, better music, they would have given you better music. You basically no already it. licensed Castlevania. They got that license. I mean, can't... I don't know the legalities of it, but I would... Can't you use some of the Castlevania music? Do you have to license that too? You know how and are you too cheap to do it? I, I mean, maybe. I don't, well, I don't, I don't know really if know. it has to do with their cheapness, but you know how complicated the music situation is in almost anything you do with music. It's gonna, they, they charge you through the, the nose for that type of stuff. It's like any sort of advertising. For some reason, that music, using it is very expensive, and these guys were obviously having a hard time getting money. So, um... 
Yeah, just to be clear on this issue, no Castlevania music, none. You're not going to hear anything you're familiar with. You're not going to hear the vampire killer theme. You're not going to hear the Aquarius theme. You're not going to hear bloody tears. And these are like really big themes. I'm not even talking about your more um, obscure things. Uh, right. These are like big, big Castlevania themes that you would expect to hear in a Castlevania feature. Definitely yeah. Bloody Tears and Vampire Killer. Actually, I expected nice. to hear something. It no nice. Castlevania <laughs> music, and the music that's there is inconsequential. It's just there. It's similar to, like, Lords of Shadow type stuff. It's yeah. this, you know, Western orchestral ambience. Nothing with any real melody, nothing with any real, um, any real hook. I'm sure it made a difference. It had its impact, but it was oh, yeah. nothing that, you know, you're going to It made a difference. Make note of if it wasn't there, it. if it wasn't there, it would seem like there would be there was a void. But right. I mean, yeah, it did something, but yeah, it's nothing you're going to make note of watching. It's just doing its job, making sure there's not that empty space, and that's that. Now, I will give them props on one thing. It is about a monster and it is about Castlevania. They did have the Cyclops boss. And from Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, in a way that was um, true to the game. Now I The should... Cyclops was pretty cool, I thought. It was one of the better parts of the whole thing, actually, because yeah. it was a very it was very Castlevania-ish. Now I should get into what this is about. This this cartoon is an adaptation of Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, which is a popular Castlevania game that came out in 1989. On the Nintendo Entertainment System, it came out in Japan in '89, got localized over um, to America and Europe in 1990, and it's about um, the character Trevor Belmont, who was the first Belmont to actually face down and kill Dracula. Uh, now, in the timeline, he's not the first Belmont; that would be Leon Belmont. But um, Leon Belmont did not get the chance to actually kill Dracula. So Trevor is... He didn't the even fight Dracula. No, so. he didn't. The last boss of Lament of Innocence, the Leon Belmont game, is death. Um, so Trevor goes around. An inter interesting thing about, Castle, uh, about Dracula's Curse, Castlevania 3, is unlike the original Castlevania, uh, it, doesn't necessar it doesn't take place entirely within the castle. Trevor is going around the land and um, working his way toward Castlevania. And along the way, he meets these companions, Grant Dynasty, who people mistake as a pirate. <laughs> um, you know, a guy who climbs on walls, throws knives. Saifa Belnades, or however you want to pronounce her last name. That's kind of a point of contention. Right. Uh, I wonder, you know... I don't play Castlevania Judgment, that like weird fighting game on the GameCube. Yeah. They, they they probably they might have a voice of how they pronounce that, but I don't know. I wouldn't go by their voice anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there's also the famous character Alucard, who's most famous for being the protagonist of probably the most beloved Castlevania game, Castlevania Symphony of the Night from the PlayStation. So Trevor Belmont goes around with these characters and he works his way toward Dracula and he kills Dracula. Now, this story works pretty well for a cartoon, better than many other Castlevania games, I think. I think that's why they adapted it because A, Dracula had never been killed before, so it's a really big event in the timeline. B, it's pretty much Dracula's first big attack on humanity. See, uh, after Lament of Innocence, when the Matthias character became Dracula, he was pretty much just, his problem was primarily with God. Uh, it didn't necessarily become, it, he didn't necessarily have a big problem with humans until they killed his wife. So right. then that's when he starts waging war against humans. So this story is pretty good because you're seeing kind of the, be it's not the beginning, but actually it well, kind I, of I, is. This was the first time when he was Matthias, he, you know, uh, I believe it wasn't it that uh, he blamed God for what happened to his wife. Or, <laughs> yes. Or okay. Now he's blaming humans for what happened to. His so wife. now he hates God and humans. Right. <laughs> so if you, if kind of Lament of Innocence is actually somewhat of a prologue, I would say, and Castlevania yeah. Three is actually a good chapter one. 
right you know and it also works good because trevor has these friends a lot of times when you play these other games like um castlevania 2 uh i almost called that dracula's curse because it would actually fit with <laughs> right. the subject of the game castlevania 2 simon's quest it's pretty much just simon roaming around transylvania by himself so and these characters are pretty iconic it also uses the alucard character and you know castlevania is gonna love to do that because that's like one of the most popular characters in the series i have to admit man i, I was looking forward to seeing alucard in this show so yeah who I, wouldn't you know, be i can understand why they love using him <laughs> So, um, about the characters. Now, there's Grant, the guy I said who is mistaken for a pirate often. He, weirdly enough, he is completely omitted. I don't know if there are plans to use him or not. Uh, My guess would be not. Otherwise, he would be in it. I think they're yeah. saving money on a character that probably they probably figure isn't going to be very popular and isn't going to make much difference <laughs> i will say that just from what i know grant is the least popular of the playable characters in castlevania 3 and in my opinion he is too he's the least cool right um but yeah it looks like they probably won't have him because actually grant is the guy who trevor should have come across first yeah he's and not he gonna did be it. it probably not now I mean, maybe if they get a budget they'll you know throw him in there and in some point in the story that he shouldn't have been you know yeah he, he could always pop up again now as far as grant being missing what do i think of that i think it's kind of a bummer because um now this kind of you know this seems like a character you could have used for like good comedic relief and not that I'm looking for a bunch of yucks from Castlevania, but you he, don't want them using another character for comedic relief, like Trevor, you know, who they did a little bit too much of that when he was in the when he first showed up. I'm going to get to him. Yeah, I guess <laughs> you know. we can start talking about Trevor, actually. Well, you can go in the direction you were going. I just, you know, I think as I long as we were talking about comedic relief. I might as well hit that beat, right? I think I've said as much as I have to say about Grant. I actually think it's a bummer he's not there. I think he could have added something. Yeah. About Trevor, he's not what I expected. Now, Trevor in Castlevania 3 didn't... No one in Castlevania 3 really had much of a character. Uh, however, we saw more of a character for Trevor in the much later game, in real time, Castlevania Curse of Darkness. These names, man, I mean... Dracula's Curse, Curse of Darkness, uh, I Simon's get mixed up. Quest. Yeah. yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I get mixed up with them. Uh, you know. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, uh, they can be difficult to keep straight. Uh, yeah. We actually saw Trevor's character more in Curse of Darkness, and he is nothing like what you see in this cartoon. In the cartoon, Trevor Belmont is a drunk when I first saw him, I thought he was kind of putting on appearances of being a drunk, just so, so maybe he wouldn't stand out. And But the actual cartoon makes it clear, no, this is actually the real personality of the guy. He's a hobo. <laughs> he goes around from town to town getting drunk and... <laughs> getting in bar fights. Getting in bar fights, yeah. And... Sleeping honest, with sheep or something. You know? Oh, no, he wasn't the one doing that. <laughs> that well, was, I, I didn't mean sleeping, you know, I didn't oh. mean... I just meant, you know, going out into, that's where he would sleep, with, in like a barn or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which I guess I should have said horses, but whatever, <laughs> you know? And um, there is reason for Trevor to be like this, and this was established way back in the 1989 game. The Belmonts were cast out of the land, and we did not know the specifics of that either. It just said that the people became afraid of their strength. You know, we got a little scroll in uh, a crawl, I should say, in um, Castlevania 3, the 89 game. And it just said, you know, the, the basic stuff, the Belmonts, people became afraid of their strength, they cast them out. We didn't know how really the technicalities on how that happened. This show actually gives us some more background, more than we've ever had, on why people would do that. So there is reason for Trevor. He is down on his luck. His, ca his house has, you know, been pretty much dissolved. Well, Nobody he's the last likes one, them. I believe that's what he said, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, he, he has no family. So, yeah, there is a... He seems to have money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he throws it around, you know. <laughs> yeah, so there is reason for Trevor to be like this. It's just not... I just don't think it's what people would expect from Trevor Belmont. I kind of liked it, you know. I mean, uh, 
if they had done Simon that way, I might have had some issue. Oh you know? man, you should see Simon in Castlevania Judgment. He is <laughs> terrible. It's really? like when they do try to give this guy some character. Oh no, it's silly. It's just very Japanese. Like, do I have did did I have the strength to defeat Dracula, or was it just the whip? Oh you know, they God. gave him the kind of this doubting personality and right. this kind of. He had to go on this prove yourself kind of journey, which for Simon Belmont felt strange. Yeah. And I don't know. It's like when they give these silent protagonist guys character, these characters that I've known for years, like Trevor and Simon, it feels weird. Well, I mean, you have to be good at giving it. If, if, like, yeah, because I wasn't, you know, too. I wasn't disappointed in Trevor's uh, personality, but I think from what you're telling me about Simon... Yeah. Uh, well, Castlevania Judgment all around is a bizarre game that I don't play, as I've, right. I've made clear. Um, Trevor, I mean, yeah, uh, he was weird. He wasn't what I expected, especially... Like, when I saw Trevor in Curse of Darkness, he pretty much seemed like Trevor to me. Yeah. Which he was, I guess, you know, a quote-unquote badass character. Uh, well, it wasn't his game, so, you know, he was the... Uh, what can I compare him to, you know? The, just, uh, uh, what's that guy? Um, I'm probably sounding terrible. Gray Fox? Is that his name in Metal Gear? Yeah, he was the Gray Fox, Julius Belmont type character that, you know, there's no reason for him to not be a badass, so we're gonna make him this badass who doesn't save the day, you know? And just so I can throw it out there, because I know a lot of my, you know fans probably are metal gear fans i i like the nes game and outside of that i've never been a big metal gear you know fan right. not that i have anything against it but getting off of that point i guess uh, well i guess <laughs> characters like that are sort of a benchmark for your character to grow beyond it's yeah. like when you start the game you meet this person and then they're you know this big badass who could kick your you know ass and then <laughs> uh at some point in the game they get beat <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it works in Curse of Darkness. You fight Trevor twice. First is a battle. Uh, technically, your character Hector doesn't win. You just have to like wheedle his like life bar down so much, and it's really hard to do. And you don't, of course, get it all the way. Enter cutscene. Enter cutscene, and then Trevor's literally on the ground panting. It's a totally different yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Anyway, yeah, Trevor Belmont, I mean, it, he wasn't what I was expecting. He wasn't, he was, but he wasn't terrible, I guess. Yeah. Uh, as far as his design, actually, I would have loved to have seen that barbarian outfit. Uh, <laughs> not, he didn't look bad. I, I guess it just didn't go with the narrative. They're trying, I, I mean. It never went with the I don't the know narrative. what year it was supposed to be. <laughs> 1476. I know my minutia. Yeah, it would have been hard for them to pull <laughs> off the barbarian. I mean, they could have done it, you know. Um, but I, I just don't think they were trying to portray him as some, you know, Highlander or anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. The barbarian outfit, the, the prehistoric warrior, never went with the narrative. It was kind of an anomalous. Right. And, like, like why is this Conan fighting Dracula? That's <laughs> never been depicted in any kind of fiction before. So it's kind of a weird quirk of Castlevania. Well, originally, they didn't give him a nationality. So he could have been, you know, a Highlander or something. Yeah, yeah, you got a point, actually. Yeah, they never actually really did give the Belmonts a nationality. Certainly not with Simon in the, the original no, game, you know. No, yeah, they never really, you never really knew what country they were from specifically. Right. Uh, you never really did. I mean, I'm not good with names. Maybe Belmont could have been a Scottish name. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah it sounds like it could have been um okay moving on we have the cypher character now um she was cool i'm glad to see she was a magician and she had her elemental powers it's very true to the game as far as her design uh it's like not a big deal but um she had a much shorter haircut than right. what i'm typically used to associating with her but i'm gonna go back to castlevania judgment this i'm surprised i'm talking so much about it um <laughs> She had a shorter haircut in that, uh, but in did Cas she have attitude in that too? Yeah, she was okay. like some kind of hardcore into vampire hunting and, and really dogmatic about it. That's pretty. I uh, guess they were doing that character then. Yeah, uh, Cypher. She was portrayed well. I thought. I I thought it was cool. You dogmatic know? attitude, short hair. Yeah, uh, I guess they may have looked to Judgment. Well, I don't know, because I think by the time they started this script, Judgment wasn't out. 
But, you know, they could have made changes without us looking. I don't know. Right. Um, but Saifa was portrayed cool. As far as Alucard, he was great. I thought that, you know, what more do you want out of Alucard? It's cool to see exactly... You kind of... It's cool to see exactly why he... The circumstances for why he turned against Dracula. Yeah. Um, even though Dracula started killing people, Alucard knew his mom wouldn't want that and went against it. We kind Speaking of, of his that. mom, she was a good-looking woman for a woman who, like, raised Alucard into, like, a 20-something-ish-year-old man <laughs> when they killed her. <laughs> oh, yeah, she looked basically the same as she did before. <laughs> Except she had short hair. Oh, yeah, uh, that's an interesting point you bring out. I don't think I have anything else to add on top of it. I just, it. <laughs> as long as we were talking about that... Um, <laughs> I, I, it was something Did that dawned think? on me when I was watching. I'm like, man, they didn't age her a day. They didn't do Dracula well, no wonder either. Dr so Dracula was so sense. pissed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like he just he found that one ageless human, um, and she just happened to be interested in him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Lisa, Lisa Fahrenheit, uh, that's her name, actually. Cool name. She's, yeah, it, it always was. She's always supposed to be depicted as that pristine perfect peerless the perfect woman right that's why it's such a tragedy that you know she gets burned <laughs> at the stake <laughs> oh yeah they, they definitely they got that part down yeah they got that down and lisa was depicted cool uh it's cool to see exactly how she met dracula though it seems pretty weird to walk into a vampire's castle but she must have you know you know did they ever there was like a symphony of the night manga uh or there is one mm -hmm. um but yeah it's uh, i don't think it goes into the um specifics as much as this cartoon did definitely not for how that happened right um okay so yeah those are the characters i thought lisa I, as for dracula he was cool dracula, I, uh, was awesome. dracula was cool in fact i was pissed that he was only in the first damn episode what the the, the <laughs> here i'm gonna stutter because it, it, it's just so upsetting. I kept, after every episode, I kept going, there's no Dracula. I mean, after the second one, he was in the first one, but after the second one, I didn't mind it too much. Then the third one came, and I knew that there was only one episode left, and he wasn't in the third one. I'm like, well, you know, you can't go another episode and not have a minute, so I'm just waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and he never showed up again. Well, if you actually... Um want to use the games as a reference and i don't think they do because i don't think they did that much homework as you alluded to uh -huh. dracula in these games typically doesn't appear well until the very end <laughs> I, I i will take a step back then and say that if they do that if they pull it off to where <laughs> this is ridiculous though if they pull it off to where dracula does not show up until the very end i will give them a round of applause i will give them props for that yeah because sure then i'll understand there was a reason but if he shows up in like the middle of the the story again and then disappears and then shows up sometime later i imagine then, they will probably do that i would imagine so which is why you know you want people to remember this thing you want people to keep talking about it while you're preparing the second season yes now let's get that brings us to another point Dracula is actually kind of, sort of, not really the antagonist of this thing. Right. If there is an antagonist the way they presented it, it would be the church. And we identify them primarily with this bishop character. Yeah. Uh, the church, uh, what, what it's leading me to believe is that the church is, the show wanted to depict the church as evil church. I mean, that's a trope. Look it up on um, TV tropes. Evil church. It's played to a T in uh, in this. They're misguided. They oppress the people. Um, Castlevania never really depicted the church like that in the right. games. The church was always pretty much on the up and up. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a new thing. I don't necessarily think this needed to do that. And uh, just because... It, well, it kept them from having to create... Uh, more different type, types of monsters yes know? yes and i was actually disappointed in that watching the show it's like it was terrible this show is having <laughs> uh the antagonist being the church priests and the bishop when i came i'm here to see some monsters you well know what I, I mean there's that part but that's like the obvious part what isn't so obvious is that you have these like priests who are walking around with knives and they fight like ninjas <laughs> you know and 
you have that instead of having bones and stuff, you know, or or ghosts or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> bone soldier. Yeah, uh, I, I guess it's easier. Bone. It's easier to do to make you know. I mean, everyone knows how if they know how to draw a human. Uh, yeah, they can have humans doing the attacking there. And what happens is you don't get Dracula isn't the bad guy in this no, because. I, his monsters are attacking these terrible people. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you don't know what to do as far as who to root for or right. things like that. What side to be on. You know, There's because, three sides. So yeah. it, it's like you're, you're, you're not really concerned with what Dracula's doing. And you're rooting for uh, Trevor's side. And so. you're kind of kind of like dracula's got pretty good reason to be upset of course yeah. alucard presented a good point he's like hey just wipe out the people who killed <laughs> you know who killed my mom you don't got to go raging against all of humanity that's true that's so, a good point yeah <laughs> yeah it's like okay maybe take out this one town and you know and what's done is done <laughs> yeah what's done is done but dracula kind of went off the deep end got prejudiced i guess and figured yeah. all humans were like this which i guess he he has this reason um that before he even met her they killed his or they didn't kill his wife but you know uh apparently god killed his wife and he's got god's got all these people uh worshiping him and you good know, point that's so actually a good point he didn't like them to begin with yeah now let's move on to the actual art direction i thought this was a very good looking cartoon i thought you know the anatomy was good the proportions were good there were a lot of great perspectives and the characters just looked real solid. It wasn't like this way over stylized stuff. People look like people. I hate stylized stuff. You I see mean, too much of it in cartoons yeah. these days. That's yeah. the problem. And it was well colored. It was well shaded. You know. Yeah, well um, colored and well shaded. So while the music really, they dropped the ball on that. Visually, the cartoon I think looked good, and I'm, I'm you know satisfied with it. There's not, there's it doesn't leave me wanting. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily think an anime would have been better than this. Right. I don't. What I do think that the Japanese would have done is have more monsters. Japanese are into their monsters. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They would have had more than this bat thing. Like you would right. have seen a hunchback, and they're more into like staying true to um, the material usually more than westerners westerners are typically. Right. So I think they would have highlighted a Frankenstein's monster. Maybe they would have highlighted, you know, a giant skeleton. They would have highlighted mermen, you know, um, but visually speaking, this was good. Um, I it had it. great effects. Uh, that scene where Dracula is coming out of the portal. His oh face. yeah, that was cool. <laughs> that was an amazing scene. Yeah. Um, it, and everything moved really good, you know. Uh, I have no complaints about. It. I I get this will probably be the shortest section because I have no complaints about it either. Yeah, no complaints about the visuals. I thought they were good. The character designs were good. Like, you know, the character designs weren't bad. Even though there are things I would have rather seen for the characters, just because I'm used to them. Like, Barbarian Trevor. Barbarian Trevor, Saifa with long hair. I mean, that's like really nitpicky. For me, it was Alucard wearing, you know, some sort of shirt. You know. Uh, yeah. It's like don't put. Don't don't put your coat on and your naked you know chest or whatever. Your that naked was back. that was weird. We'll, <laughs> we'll see if he's kind of more in his traditional outfit. You know, they Hopefully. did just next time they did just wake him up. So I was kind of thinking they'll probably have Alucard looking like Alucard if he goes around like that the whole time. <laughs> that will be interesting. I will say it won't like turn me off of the whole thing, but it will be an odd choice. It'll be well. I think it would be. I mean, for for. Castlevania fans, it will be odd, but for, from a casual standpoint, I think it would be expected. Yeah. You know, uh, drawing the girls and everything. <laughs> oh. He, Alucard never seemed to have a problem doing that when he had clothes on. Right, uh, right. <laughs> um, okay, so, overall things you liked from this. Now, we all, we kind of already talked about things that we liked, but... What I can say I liked is just what we touched upon, the art direction. I thought that was strong. I like that Warren Ellis um, did some of his homework and that it the cartoon fleshes out 
important beats in Castlevania that the games left very vague, but that are very important. They flesh it out really, really well. Um, things that I think could have been done better. More monster, more Castlevania monsters. More Castlevania music and just better music in general. Um, this thing, you know, fighting the church like this, I hope that stops. We've had enough of it. It's time to concentrate on fighting Dracula and fighting monsters, which they kind of got to in the fourth episode. And a lot of the things in the story just didn't make sense. Like, why are these people in this town staying at this town that keeps oh. getting attacked? And why aren't they really defending themselves much? Right. Trevor got into the town really, really easy. That means it's really, really easy to get out of that town. Uh, he made some sort of statement like, no one can get in, no one can get out. But then he gets in like two minutes later. Yeah, now <laughs> I know like... It might be dangerous running around in the wild, but it's definitely, you know those things are going to come attack your town at night. This is, a, that was the thing that sort of bothered me. They were, uh, the people there were prejudiced against the speakers. The speakers and uh, for some dumb reason, they were going to wait till nightfall to kill the speakers. Well, nightfall is when the monsters come. Yes, they thought that if they killed the speakers, Dracula's monsters wouldn't attack their town. So they wait for the point, just for the listeners out there who might not know. So they wait for the period of time when Dracula's monsters are going to attack their town to when, kill the speakers. When they could have killed them any time. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of things that didn't make sense. Like, the people know the building the speakers live in. Why, yeah, why not just go there and kill them? And why are you staying in this town when it's being raided by monsters? Right. And why aren't you really defending yourself when it's being raided by monsters? I know this, you come around and attack here and people are going to come <laughs> out with guns. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> right. The, 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 right. The people I live around just aren't going to let stuff like that happen. Yeah. You know? Um, so uh, there are things in the story that didn't make a lot of sense to me. If your town's being raided, you're going to defend it. Even if you're just a field hand, you're going to defend it. I mean, you got to defend your family. you got to defend your your land. You know what I mean? People right. will do that. Um, if you're not going to defend it, you're going to leave and go someplace safer. You know what I mean? Which, yeah, there are people like refugees. You're not going to stay. Uh, some crazy people might stay there. But you know what I mean? Um, but those are crazy people. Yeah. Not the type of people that will go about defending themselves and their family and stuff like that. And the funny thing is, Trevor's the one who rallies them to start defending themselves, and they do it successfully. They actually defeat <laughs> Dracula's monsters. Now, um, there is some reason for why this would make sense. Trevor, his family, is knows how to fight things like this. He knows that holy water is going to be effective against them. You would think that the church would know some of this stuff too. You just think that these people would be more effective at defending themselves without Trevor Belmont. Right. Well, the church came off as very ignorant from the very beginning. Uh, yeah. As if they didn't know. They were basically going off the stereotypical uh, impression of what the church was like back then, you know, where they're. they're uh -huh suspecting the wrong people of being you know witches or something yeah and killing them and uh they're 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 corrupt and all that stuff and basically i guess the, the narrative was that this bishop had worked the people up into a frenzy into believing that these speakers were the be all end all and once you got rid of them uh the problem was over and so no one lifted a finger to set up defenses and to you know organize some sort of military hierarchy or of any kind uh and and so they for some dumb reason would wait till nightfall to try and attack these people <laughs> and it, you know as i said i'm the creator of a comic book series and i'm always asking questions why this or why not that if i come up with an idea in fiction i got to make sure that the idea really works and is foolproof right i like to um okay now, if the church has power here, the church is going to raise up an army to deal with this threat. 
And if the church isn't going to do it, the local lords are going to do it. Why aren't I seeing an army to do? No one's just going to let a bunch of monsters go and ravage their lands, you know, um, unhindered. That's just that doesn't work narratively speaking. So what I'm seeing is like, where is the church or where are the lords and their vassals and whatnot? Sloppy, lazy writing. That's the problem with a lot of fiction these days is ultimately you need at least th this is the view of quote unquote writers these days is ultimately you need a hero to come and save the masses. One and guy or one woman, generally one guy, though. And if you have these lords come in <laughs> and do his job, then 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 they have to be even more creative to find a purpose for this one guy that is special beyond what the army can do. Doesn't work for me. Like, I have to just shrug my shoulders and roll with it. And I don't like doing that with fiction. Yeah, you that's you, but I mean? they know that most people will eat yeah, that Yeah, most up. people will. But, and that's exactly what they present. These people are incompetent until Trevor goes there and tells them what to do. And then they're able to fight. Actually, it was, well, Sypha killed a number of those monsters, but it was right. a lot of the people just stabbing them and stuff. Right. You yeah. know? Uh, yeah. So I didn't like that aspect of the story. I thought it was sloppy writing. I'm asking questions. Why not this? Why not that? Why not this? And uh, I understand it's fiction, and sometimes you could go overboard with the nitpicking, but that's not... But it's lazy. It's yeah, lazy that's writing. lazy. It doesn't make sense. Um, okay, so moving on. I guess we'll get to... Uh, our final segment here. Are you excited about a continue seeing another season of this? I'm a little lukewarm. Like I said, they they dropped the ball by stalling so long. You know, not giving you Dracula except for in the first freaking episode. You know, I I, I honestly think if you're going to do four episodes and then you're gonna have to wait wait an indeterminable indeterminable amount of time. I, someone cor can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I don't know if they've announced when the second season comes out. But my impression is that it's going to I'm it's gonna be like usual. I'll have to wait another year yeah. or so. So I, I would be stupid to have to, wait, to actually be excited at this point for what I might be getting a year from now. I see. You know? So this didn't excite you enough to, you no. know... You, you have to give me more. Four episodes, fine. But just give me something that makes me want to see what happens next right um now this series wasn't bad but it did not change my life and i know that's like a funny thing to say but i mean look at it this way i'm like a really really huge castlevania fan everybody knows that like you can't doubt the successor's castlevania <laughs> fandom you just can't do that and castlevania was a really important aspect of my life you know what I mean? And I have not been keeping up with Castlevania for years now just because it hasn't put out anything in years that has excited me. And Lord, the Mercury Steam game, Lords of Shadow, um, Lords of Shadow 2, Mirror of Fate, I think it's called. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not an expert on those games. I don't play them. Um, those games like knocked me out of Castlevania and Konami seems to not have much faith in the series now or know what to do with it so here comes along this cartoon now if anything was going to get me back into Castlevania it was going to be this you know this was the best most realistic chance and like I said it didn't change my life it didn't you know it didn't enthuse me about the Castlevania series um it was not bad, but it wasn't great. There are things I liked about it. There are things I don't like about it. And I think it's it, it didn't enthuse me about Castlevania again. If, if I was already all pumped on Castlevania like I was, say, way back in 2003 and 4 and 5 and maybe even 6. Yeah, 6. And this came out. I would have thought, okay, great, you know, it wasn't perfect, but great, you know, because that's what I was, that's what I was like when um, Castlevania, the Belmont Legacy, the 
IDW, I think it was IDW, it was Dreamwave Comics, I can't remember at the time, mm -hmm. but uh, Castlevania, the Belmont Legacy comic book series starring Christopher Belmont, it wasn't great, but you know, <laughs> it um, had its moments, it had its moments, <laughs> and it kind of a lot of the problems with it are similar to this, not enough good monsters, you did some homework, but you didn't do enough, not Castlevania-ish, yeah, but not quite enough, you know, but I thought it was okay, I liked seeing it, yeah. Um, but that wouldn't have gotten me back into Castlevania if I was out of it. And that's kind of what how I feel about this. I'm not really that big into Castlevania right now, to tell you the truth. And this doesn't change that. <laughs> so, right. I mean, I'm kind of in the same spot I was before. So that's what I mean when I say that uh, this Castlevania Netflix show did not change my life. It didn't like make me super excited about Castlevania again. That's a shame, though. Yeah, it is. Now, on a scale of five, one to five stars using the point system, I would give this cartoon a either a two or a 2.5, probably a two. What would you oh, give it? I was going to be a little kinder than that. <laughs> Surprisingly, I'll be kinder than you are. I was going to say 3.2. Wow, really, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, so what it really comes down to is... To me, it's okay, you know? Um, it's right. okay, nothing more. You know what I mean? So 2.5, that's right in the middle. That's right where I think this thing should be, yeah. to tell you the truth. And um, going, leading into like a future video, another thing that really hasn't enthused me about Castlevania too much is Koji Igarashi's latest game, his Kickstarter project, um, Bloodstains. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is a ridiculous title, in my opinion. Uh, Koji hasn't changed at all, and that's the probably that's the problem. The, problem. <laughs> I, uh, that, the game I I like retro. That's too retro, <laughs> and I'll get into that more next time. But for now, thanks for listening. If you have any comments, feel free to comment. If this is the type of content you want to keep seeing, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and share the content with other people. And I will talk to you again very soon. But in the meantime, take care.